What's up my friend, welcome back to another video. And today I wanted to share with you my favorite solo string libraries. So I did a video similar to this, I think like last year. And so some things have changed. My preferences have varied just a little bit. And so I wanted to do an updated video on my favorite string libraries, specifically the solo ones here. And I'm kind of going in order of the ones that I use the most frequently or the ones that I'm like most likely to uh, turn to first in a certain project. So just to kick things off, let's, let's get started here. The first one I usually use on a regular basis is performance samples. Now I've been sort of a long time user of performance samples libraries ever since I got Vista. The original Vista library has been really, really useful for me. It has a really easy workflow for me. And the other libraries that Jasper releases is really no exception. So the newest one at the time of this recording is the Vista 2 Solo Cello Legato. And it really helps that the cello is one of my favorite string instruments in the first place, probably my favorite. And so um, when he released this module, it was really, really cool to see how you know, the improvements he's made in solo strings over time, it's just gotten better and better. So let me play the solo shell legato here first, just so you can hear how this library sounds, and then we'll move on. All right, so the really cool thing here is that Jasper is using a new legato technique he calls the sympathetic resonance legato approach. And I don't, I, I won't pretend to know really what that means, but all I know is that legato transitions sound very musical. And it like, if I close my eyes and listen to the library, especially when we're transitioning between notes, it actually feels like there's a live player um, you know, playing playing the notes there. Uh, I think one thing that also really helps is that this library doesn't feel perfect. Like there are some little imperfections when it comes to the performances. It feels a bit rustic to me and I can't really put it into words, but it has a really beautiful quality that makes it just sound more lifelike to me. So that's one library that I will use all the time for solo cello is uh, Vista 2. Let's move on to another PS library, and that is Pacific Solo Strings. So these actually came out at the same time as the Vista 2 Solo Cello. Um, and this one is only violin and cello. So no viola, no violin 2, uh, no uh, double bass. But yeah, it's basically violin and cello. And what you get is, you know, more of the workhorse articulation. So for the violin and cello, you get the legato and sustains. You got harmonics, marcados, motion tremolos, which is sort of a new technique across between, you know, just regular tremolos and um, and sort of like measured tremolos. And then pizzicatos, spiccatos, and regular staccato. So, you know, sort of the workhorse stuff there. But uh, again, for me, I'm mainly using legato. And for me, that's sort of a lot of my music anyway. So let's have a listen to the violin first. All right, and let's move on to the cello here.
Okay, so that is the cello and violin legato from Pacific Solo Strings. Now, one thing I want to make very clear is that <clears throat> um, these libraries in particular are very focused on like one thing only, and that is expressive romantic styles. Like you can hear the vibrato is quite heavy, although not overbearing, I would say. Like that sort of gets to the point of um, being overly bearing, like overbearing if if we actually encounter that. But I think these libraries strike a good balance between sort of that classical sound and that sort of romantic tone as well. Um, but just know that this library comes baked in with a lot of stuff. There's one legato type, there's one type of transition. So uh, like, for example, you notice how the cello has a lot of slurred transitions, right? The, the legato takes a lot of time to speak and it's a more emotive sort of sound, whereas Vista 2's solo cello is a lot more workhorse. It's, it's a lot more fingered legato, it sounds like, or, you know, the, the notes transition a lot quicker. So just know that when you're picking up a certain library, there's a certain vibe that you're getting with it as well. And it's not, these are not the most flexible libraries, but if you have a specific purpose you're trying to accomplish with these libraries and you write for that purpose, then these libraries are among the top choices for me in that regard. Um, the other cool thing is that Jasper also released a free version of the Pacific uh, Cello Legato, and uh, I usually use that as well here. Um, actually, let me see if I can pull that up really quickly. Uh, so here, the Pacific Solo Cello Legato Freebie, and let me just drag that into the Legato patch just to replace it. And I actually find myself using this freebie sometimes more so than the paid version in Pacific Solo Strings. Um, just because it's a different vibe altogether, it's basically a completely different instrument, but it, it works really, really well for more workhorse purposes. Uh, while we do that, while this patch loads, let's play the uh, Mercado patch from, from Pacific Solo Strings for that cello as well. So very similar to Pacific Ensemble Strings, what I really like here is that this patch doubles as a sort of a spiccato patch. Like you could really hear the attack on the strings and unlike a regular Mercado where you would attack a note and then come off, um, this library treats a Mercado as a looped sustain, but just with a big accent at the very beginning. So just like kind of how I demonstrated, you could play some short notes with a lot of attack and then hold a long accented sustain as long as you want before lifting up. So it gives you a lot of flexibility there. I think Jasper would still recommend using the dedicated spiccato staccato patches uh, for those purposes. But if you want sort of an, a general purpose, you know, performance sort of patch, um, then this would sort of be the one I would go to. Uh, but it doesn't have legato, so do keep that in mind. Um, but let's hear the Pacific uh, freebie legato here from the cello. Right, so yeah, like you still hear the slidiness in those transitions, but it's a little less pronounced, I feel like, in this freebie. Um, so yeah, that that's that's performance samples. Really enjoy their stuff, and it just happens that the work, or sorry, the the sound and their sort of style of performance that Jasper captures in his libraries kind of lines up with what I do. Um, so for someone who is not technical when it comes to the computer and prefers to just plug and play and make music, these libraries are basically a perfect fit for myself because I just don't really have to fiddle, uh, worry about fiddling with knobs and stuff. I can just get, you know, performing and, and, and recording and playing. That being said though, there are other libraries I will turn to on occasion. For example, uh, you know, Pacific Solo Strings does not have the viola. So I, right now I'm still using the CSSS viola, which I think is the strongest instrument from this library anyway. So let me play this a little bit here and we'll see how this viola sounds.
yeah, beautiful sound and sort of similar to Pacific. It has a sort of a darker signature, which I do like because I can always brighten it up with EQ, right? But I'm less likely to want to darken something if it's if it's a little brighter, whereas it's a little easier for me to sort of brighten something up if it's a little too dark. And then similar to uh, performance samples with a Mercado patch, this is sort of a, like a loop sustain as well, but just with a nice spiccato overlay as well as a faster legato transition, so. So it's generally recommended to use the Mercado patch if you want to play faster runs. And of course, the Spiccato overlay helps add that extra bit of bite <clears throat> at the onset of every note that you play. And then kind of a unique workflow to the Cinematic Studio series is that they've mapped the different lengths of short notes to the mod wheel. So at the very top, you get the longest with Schwarzando. Very bottom, you get the Spiccato. that bit of uh, vibrato put in on those Forzando notes. And then for the pizzicato section, you have Pitts, Bartok Snap, and Colenio. Cool. And then finally, you also get a Consortino emulation as well. And this is basically just an EQ filter, I believe. I don't think there are any separate Concertino samples, which would probably double the size of the library. So it's nice to have sort of a Concertino option in case you need that thinner, uh, more wispy sort of sound. All right, so that is CSSS, another library I'm really fond of and I've used since the beginning. Um, so let's move on to a couple others here. Now we have the Intimate Legato series from Sonic Cinema, uh, especially the cello I really like, um, but they also have the, the violin here too. Uh, let's have a listen to the cello first here. All right, so the thing about these two libraries in particular is that they have a very bright, clear, detailed sound, as you can hear, almost bordering on scratchy and maybe nasal or harsh. Um, but of course, the tone itself, you can always shape with EQ. And in terms of the legato itself, it's a very thick sort of legato. I, 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 there's probably a better way to describe it, but it, there's a bit of delay. And I think the out-of-the-box parameters that they've given you uh, for the legato playing is a very good middle ground approach. Uh, whereas, you know, the other libraries, you can have a bit more flexibility with the legato. For example, CSSS, the harder you play, the faster you play, the legato sort of adapts. Um, that's not really the case here with this library where, I mean, you can adjust the speed, but I think the performance is sort of uh, start to sound a little bit unnatural and forced. Whereas if you play a little slower and play more, you know, uh, more themes in a, in a slower pace, these will give you the best results in my opinion. 
So I'll definitely use these in a more exposed context because for ensemble stuff, I find that, you know, Pacific or uh, Vista or even, you know, CSSS fits a little bit better because of the darker sonic signature. So these are beautiful libraries in their own right too. <clears throat> and then moving on to an absolute classic, Tina Guo's uh, Cello Legato. This was recorded way, way back, but it really still stands out as a very unique library with just solid, solid legato and a unique performance uh, as well from Tina's uh, signature. So um, this is how I first discovered Tina Guo. And since I've gotten to work with her, it's been really, really cool to continue using her libraries. But uh, let, me, let me play her legato patch here for you a little bit. So the only downside literally is just that because this library is so good, so many composers use it. And because this library has such a sonic, uh, distinct sonic signature to it from Tina's performance, you can immediately tell when this library is being used in a specific queue or mock-up. It's really, really funny. Uh, sort of a running joke among, uh, you know, VI control and, and people who use sample libraries. But anyway, another beautiful library and uh, that's from CineSamples and CineSamples also created an electric cello library with the band Apocalyptica. So look, let me quickly show you here. Let me find it right there. Um, this library comes with both a rhythmic patch. So it allows you to do sort of sequences, accompaniments, if you will, rhythm chugging, and also a solo uh, patch with more melodic purposes. So by default, the legato loads up. Let's play that a little bit here. And here we go. Yeah, so I like this library a lot because it's very distinctive, right? Like it's, there's not a lot of libraries like this on the market. And if you can get that sound, this this sort of gritty, distorted cello sound from the source, um, then why not do it from a band that really knows what they're doing? So Baca Blitzica is wonderful. You can always go into the back end and take a look at what other articulations there are. You can always tweak your own mic mixes and turn off the distortions and the amps from the back if you want. Um, but I think the out of the box sound is really cool. And I've actually used Apocalyptica multiple times on my newest album, um, uh, Live My Life. So yeah, really, really good for cutting through the mix if you want some grit and you know a little bit of intention to cut through the mix. So there we go. And let me play one more library here for you. And that is the uh, Bohemian series from Ver Harmonic. So uh, these are beautiful libraries. They have the violin, they have the viola now, and they have the cello, which are all very well known. Um, so let me just play the viola here very quickly. And uh, there we go. So here we go. All right, so one thing I really like about these bo uh, Bohemian libraries 
is the different performing styles. So if you have a specific genre of music you're trying to capture, um, then you can try to find the one that's the most, you know, lined up to what you're hearing in your head and kind of go with that. But it's really, really cool. It gives you a really great starting point. Of course, you can always go into the back end and take a look at the articulations. You can key switch everything. It reminds me a lot of the Joshua Bell violin, by the way, from Embertone, which is another great library in its own right. Um, I just don't use it as much because for me, it takes a lot more work to get a good performance out of. Whereas for Bohemian, I find that it reads my playing a lot more accurately for my uh, my own personal style. So that's just a personal preference of mine. But yeah, definitely check out the Bohemian series as well if you haven't yet. If you want sort of a virtuosic uh, solo string library, then these are a great choice as well. So with that being said, that is... A collection of my favorite string libraries at the moment for solo uh, solo performances if you want to check out like my full sample library buyer's guide though like with every other section in there full ensemble stuff strings winds brass percussion jazz libraries piano libraries um, i'll link that down below in the description as well you can grab for free it's like just a digestible pdf you can read within an afternoon if you like if you want to see my thoughts on other libraries that i recommend plus the price points and everything like that it's all included in this guide so i want to give that to you totally free if you're interested um, I will also link to these libraries down below in the description too, if you want to purchase those. Some of those are affiliate links, so it doesn't cost you anything extra, but if you use my link to purchase, then it supports the channel, helps me make more videos like these. And if you find this uh, content helpful, then of course it's greatly appreciated. And although there's no obligation whatsoever to do so, of course, but anyway, I really appreciate it. Thank you so very much for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about the libraries, I will do my best to help. But with that being said, I'll catch you in the next one and I'll see you very soon. Take care.